Hey y'all, so really big war here today. Nine fights, a couple rank fives. We're starting it off simple though. This is just Nimrod versus Kitty Pride. I actually make this slightly harder than I need to because the way to do this is to actually take advantage of the way that she goes stun immune um, and use it to re-parry, which you do see me doing. But I did not need to hit her at all during the incinerate phase. I would have still had plenty of power. And then I would be sitting at probably about 96% health instead of 93 as I deleted her with a 14 armor special too. But really, you just need to sit there, parry, re-parry when she goes stun immune, and throw that big special too. That is the whole ballgame. Now, moving on to this penny, I was a little bit nervous for this because we had the exact same assignment in another battle group and it got a little bit hairy. And so I was trying to be very, very careful going into this fight. My primary concern was don't lose your form, as always. But my secondary concern was try not to let her throw a bunch of special ones. And... I accepted that maybe I'll get auto-blocked once, and maybe I will let her hold on to some Flourish, because the thing is that the Flourish actually allows me to more reliably push her to Special 2. And so you'll see me doing that some here, where yes, I do hit into her block to remove the Flourish, but I'm trying to push her to Special 2. That is my... that is the focus of this whole fight. And once she's there, I can safely throw my special too, because the entire thing is unblockable. I don't have to worry about auto-block. And her combat power rate has been reduced enough that I don't have to worry about pushing her red. And so once I throw that special too and do an absolute ton of damage, despite the fact that Penny is incinerate immune, we basically just do the whole or that same thing again. I bait out a heavy, and then I heavy cancel into the special too. You just really want to lean on power focus two here and try not to let her throw special ones. It can go wrong, of course. It's a dangerous fight, but I think if you accept that you might get auto-blocked once or twice and just pay that price to manage her power, it is that much safer. And speaking of using the tactic to your advantage we're definitely going to be doing that in this nick fury fight because more than once he's going to stack a bunch of flourish and we are going to use that to completely bypass the special one now this fight of course has power efficiency so once we get him to his first special two it's pretty easy to keep him there notice i do a single hit there and immediately block because I was hoping he would come in, I could parry him, and then I could push him um, to his special two again before he went unblockable. He, of course, threw the special one immediately, but that's fine. That's why we indestructible boost, and also it's not that much damage this first time. We also were pretty on top of the decks, and I think only used two uh, charges of our indestructible boost, so that was nice as well. And we now have a ton of time left on our form as we push him into second life. Gonna immediately throw this, push him over two bars yet again. He throws it. Do I go medium light medium? No, I don't. Because, as usual with Nick, the important thing is his tactical charges. And then, once the medium light medium will take him over two bars, then that's what I do and throw another special too. Don't really have to worry about heavies here. If they come up organically, sure, but the important thing is managing Nick's tactical charges and just staying on him. Now, moving on to this Weapon X fight, this is a very similar fight to the Kitty Pride one. We are just going to parry a ton at the beginning to try and build as many arm ups as armor ups as we can. I'm actually not going to do an amazing job of said parrying. You're going to see a fair amount of normal blocks and then him immediately throwing a heavy, which is a little bit frustrating because we definitely could have had more armors right now instead of just 10. But um, at this point, we're just going to go ham because the shocks don't really hurt us. I should have ended that with a light so that I could have gotten two more armor ups on the next parry. This wouldn't have quite finished it, but it would have done a bit more damage that way. 
And then after the special two, we are unstoppable. That allows us to ignore his punish of our special attack when he's unstoppable. And then we just close it out, relying on the individual uh, shocks from removing his prowess and his regen and the energy vulnerability we get from the special one to just go ham. It costs us some health to not wait, but we also do not allow him to regen at all, do not allow prowess to stack close out the fight and move on to Carl versus Null. This should be a very simple fight. Um, I definitely mess it up a little bit. What I should have done on that first combo is immediately backed up and gone for a light. Instead, um, I did manage to do the triple light punish for his heavy right here, which honestly, very proud of myself for. Um, but for some reason right after that, he immediately through his special one, and so now we're corrupted. I was mostly on top of the... No, I take that back entirely. I was on top of the reverse controls when it didn't matter and when Null wasn't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what happened there, but luckily he stayed passive just enough to kind of karmically pay me back for him being aggressive earlier that I was able to land one more special and close it out. Weird fight, but Carl is very good for Null, and we were fine. The instant ramp from his special, or from the corruption triggering, really helped us out there. So then, of course, we have Terax here. I've taken this before. I've done 33 seconds here. I've done a boss. Um, no, the boss was 33 seconds. The last time I took this path was 39. So let's see if we can get those numbers up. Yep, immediately get the protection off. Bait the heavies, just stay on him, keep the medium light medium going so that we just stack those vulnerabilities really quick. There's another one. We are racing to the special two. Do a full combo and boom. And that is a 20 second Terax kill. I say again, this tactic really does make him easier. Carl was built for Terax, but having him never come out of Rockfield is just a gift. Moving on to Domino. This is kind of a similar, um, a similar theory to the other two mutants where you just parry a lot and then delete them. You do have to worry about Mighty Charge, but again, if you stay on top of reparries, that can even be a good thing for you, and you don't have to worry about immunities at all, so this should be very simple. A reminder that you do want to make a point of actually getting the intercept um, and removing protection now that protection is fixed and does reduce damage from damage over time effects, and so you don't want to rely on throwing your shocks into her protection. But that is fairly simple, as long as you uh, practice your backdrafts while she's at low power, stay on top of things, and there we go, this just ends it. She does get protection back right at the end, and it does cut into our shocks, but we had done enough damage, we were good to go. And so then I move on to a pretty interesting uh, fight. I have taken Killmonger with Absorbing Man before, but not on this node. Um, last time I took him on node 22 where it was important to be in magma and so I made a point of bringing Thor for the armor break synergy. We couldn't fit that this war but we also didn't need it because we were able to uh, fight in Uru form and that meant that we have access to our physical resistance. Killmonger's reverb damage is physical damage and so we're going to be totally fine. Notice that once we whiff a light attack, um, rather than getting a successful intercept, we just wait. The AI loves to just uh, bide their time in those situations, and they absolutely will parry you if you get impatient. It is imperative that when that happens, when you're going for intercepts on nodes like these, that you just wait. Block, wait, they will eventually do something that gives you an opening again, then you can capitalize on it. Notice I'm very comfortable with the um, heavy counters here. I make a point of refining, and that is going to regen the small amount of reverb damage that we do take. Now it's time for another intercept. We get it right there with a light, pause our forms. We wait out that combo, go for another heavy, cancel it into our special, and we are good to go. 
Carl is a very strong Killmonger counter because the amount of crit rating he gets on his heavy, as long as you counter for it rather than stunning, is big enough to overcome Killmonger's crit resistance, and then you're cooking with gas. Moving on to Nova on node 49. I've said this before, but with Carl versus Nova, it's important to remember that Nova has defenses against unblockable attacks, and so you don't want to just use your normal special attacks. You want to use the special three because it does not go unblockable, but it still gives you an easy way to refine your form, and it gives you a big chunk of crit rating without needing to heavy and allows you to close things out very quickly. Now notice that we are hitting his block when we can. We are also not afraid to intercept him as long as he is below 75 charges. Because yes, he will auto block us, but we're not scared of that. Because as long as he can't parry us, now of course eating a special isn't ideal, but as long as he can't parry us, like you could see right there, he was at 50 charges, then we don't really have to worry about taking damage, and it removes one of his Furies, which allows us to pause our forms. Plus, it's hitting his block, it removes the Flourish, it just keeps the fight really well under control. He, of course, goes for the Heavy immediately there, but now we have our extra crit rating. We have our Cruelty uh, boosting our... Uh, critical burst damage there and we have our form paused so we just do not have to worry about anything i could have tried to uh go for this special two here but i bait out the special one and just the incinerate from touching me finishes him off so there we go nine fights in 12 minutes this was a really fast really fun war yeah absolute blast I am so happy with Absorbing Man. I feel like for me to take these matches with him, I really am having to understand his nuances. Obviously, I'm in a very good position to do that, having built him. But that Penny fight, that Nick fight, there's a lot here where I had to work for it, and that is the appropriate, um, that's the appropriate power level that I wanted for him, right? For him to be able to take all these fights, I wanted you to have to work for it. I'm just really, really happy uh, with where he's landing as an attacker. Yeah, he's so much fun. I'm so happy with him. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this war, maybe learned something. And until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.